So we're at the Imperial Palace here in Tokyo. So that's where the Emperor lives. And um, well, I don't know if you saw, but Prince Charles is also in town and loads of other dignitaries because um, there was an enthronement ceremony on Tuesday, which means that someone new is now on the throne. And it's a pretty big deal. And it's just overlapping so nicely with the kind of who's who of rugby were also in town. Speaking of who's who, uh, the man with the best hair in all of the rugby universe, uh, Faf de Klerk, gave us some of his time. And we smiled nicely and asked him to spill the beans on his colleagues. Probably my pimpy. Yeah, I think uh, my pimpy probably, he likes to, to jam his biceps a bit and uh, be ready for the weekend, yeah. 90% of the team probably, um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot. We uh, enjoy each other's company and uh, get along really well and a few of the, the misses is also keen for a good job, so um, yeah, I'm going to go 90% of the team probably. Vali <laughs> Leroux, 100% Vali Leroux. He gets these, yeah, he's a bit uh, emotional in the morning sometimes. Sometimes he wakes up and he's very happy and it's, it's good, good to be around and then some mornings you just leave him alone and let him be. <laughs> Alad Walters, our conditioner, he is absolutely pathetic. It's really bad. Probably me. Um, yeah, probably me. <laughs> no, I just, I just like to wash my hair and keep my hair clean. That's the only thing that takes time. The rest is, it's natural. So that's about it. Me personally, I think it's Luit. He, uh, yeah, him and Archie are into heavy metal stuff, and we haven't heard of it before, but uh, they enjoy that a lot, yeah. Skog Brits. I think he's bought three coffee machines for this tour, and nothing works. So we're thinking of buying a few fishes to put in the coffee machines, because they're just standing there. The problem is the power outlets are different than in South Africa, so nothing seems to work. And he's trying his hardest, but it's not working. <laughs> Again, Skog Brits. And the reason is like he's always trying to buy coffees at, when, before he needs to leave. So Scala has missed a, a, few, a few bus trips. And especially in Japan, the people are very on time and he doesn't manage to, to get it. So Scala again. <laughs> Eben or Luat because their legs are so bloody long. Now we haven't been on tour that long. I think Katsi is pretty, he's a, he's a nice softy off the field, so Katsi probably will, will enjoy a rom-com, yeah. Today on the Rugby Ball Challenge, we are joined by Martin Williams. Oh, you just keep going till all the balls are done, you? Right, okay. That's good effort, that is seven. Are you feeling strong? I'm feeling good, yeah, yeah. What's the worst? Four, five. Four, five? Yeah. Right, okay. Um, let's go for ten. <laughs> Save yourself. And go on. for ten, right. Okay, cool. Let's get this rugby ball challenge going. Three, two, one, go. Well, we got one, which is a good start. Wait, 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 there, go. Five. Six. Shit, that's gone, it's gone, it's gone. Seven. Oh, did that one count or no? No. <laughs> How the hell does he do? <laughs> go, go, go. I <laughs> oh, still one more. Oh, that is. Six. How did you get seven? That's big man John Cooey. I would just like to thank um, Major University uh, yeah, thank for you guys. supplying rugby players to actually do the pass. Very good passing as well. For a hooker, that was outstanding. So thank you very much. How do you feel after that? Uh, it hurts a bit, mine, when it hits your ears. But I'm, I'll take six. Not quite. It's a like Kiwis. You know, they're going to win again. Like they always do. And John Cooey's going to win. But I, I'll take six. Have you done it? I've done it. How many? Five. There we are. Enough said. You beat an amateur. <laughs> I also want a pink selfie stick. So cool. Um, speaking of Instagram goals, Naomi Osaka is good fun to follow on Instagram. Fan goal right here. 
And I know, I know, she doesn't play rugby, she doesn't have anything to do with rugby. She was only handing over a Player of the Match award once, but she was in town and I'm a big fan. And I am just going to show you what she had to say when we cornered her in a hospitality area, because I love her that much and I think you should too. Favorite superhero? Probably Spider-Man. I just like his personality, I think. Like Japanese curry is a pretty safe bet, or like sushi or something. The manners, everyone's very polite. Everyone kind of cleans up after themselves. A Barbie doll. To be honest, I think I blacked out when he asked the question, so I just picked the most like basic answer. I can barely speak English. Like, no. <laughs> Probably Spider-Man. I just like his personality, I think. First album, Graduation by Kanye West. First song, I don't know. It might have been probably something by like Beyonce. Insecurity. <laughs> I feel like I should be a little bit more confident sometimes. Just trust myself more, I think. My first rugby club was Farnham Rugby Club. The Mighty Stains. King Edward the Seven School. Richards High School. Maidstone RFC. Preston Grasshoppers. Or Blackrock College. The values I learned at Hoppers, I, I, I don't think were any different to the values that I then learned at Waterloo, at Leicester, at Quinns, England Lions, and now back at Maidenhead. Um, you've got to look after each other. It's going to hurt. Uh, none of us is as good as all of us. Camaraderie, um, you know, being humble. Uh, teamwork. For me, most importantly, which I got the bug for, was professionalism. Just the ethos of rugby about um, you know going hard against each other for for whatever the you know the game was, and then being able to shake each other's hands afterwards and have that respect. Whether you win, lose, whether things go as you want, or whether they don't, understanding that there's always opportunity and a, an ability to respond and to get better and improve. It was teamship, really. It was friendship. It was selflessness, um, and it was overall. Fun. Having the, the enjoyment of just playing rugby for the love of the game and not for any other reason other than that. That was the, my favourite part of my social life when I look back, you know, and actually some of my best mates today, the guys I played rugby with eight years old, it makes them. Culture is the buzzword, but a, a team ethos that you, you leave no man behind, you look after the bloke on your left and your right. From having never played the game, being inspired to play the game and being fortunate enough to then go on to represent my country and you know, those fundamentals and the values that I learned playing school where rugby, you know, real grassroots type rugby was, you know, was pretty important in building you know, who I became as a player but more importantly who I became as a person. So what you haven't been seeing a lot of on the show is me coughing all over Charlie and the rest of Japan because a little sicky. Um, so now I have taken to wearing this because it's the polite thing to do when you are coughing up a lung. In Japan people stare, so you don't wear this because you don't want other people's germs, you wear this because you don't want to give your bad germs to them. And so this will be me. It also helps with the hyperventilating. Like I think it might come in handy this weekend when we've got some stressful rugby ahead. So I'll bring you more cough-free, germ-free Rugby World Cup daily tomorrow.